everybody and welcome to the Arts Kids. Thank you for joining us today. Our theme is dinosaurs and we are going to be taking you on a story adventure with some drama followed by some dance too and at the end we're going to show you some art that you can do at home with your families or at school. So just to introduce some of our dinosaurs that we've got today, here we have got a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Can you say that with me? Tyrannosaurus Rex. And he was known to be super duper fierce. He was a carnivore. Can you say carnivore? Carnivore, which means he would eat lots of meat and even other dinosaurs too. Now his skull here looks really small here, but actually his skull was seen to be up to one and a half meters long, which is longer than the sofa that I've got here. His head, that's amazing. And his tooth was even seen to be up to 30 centimeters long, which is as big as a ruler. Imagine having a tooth that sharp. Now he used to like to eat other dinosaurs, like I said, like a triceratops. This was his favorite dinosaur to eat, a triceratops. <laughs> You'd want to gobble him up because he was very, very tasty. Now, Triceratops. Can you say Triceratops? 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 Good. He did not like to eat meat. He liked to eat plants and leaves. So he was known as a herbivore. Can you say herbivore for me? Herbivore, well done. So here he is, Triceratops. And if you can see, he's got three spiky horns there. If I go up close, can you see that? Three spiky horns. And that was to help him fight off the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And he's even got a funny little frill here, which makes him look like he's got a bit of a funny haircut. So that's Triceratops. Another herbivore, and another one of my favorite dinosaurs, is a Stegosaurus. Can you say that? Stegosaurus. Well done. Now he was a huge dinosaur too, but he has very short legs, which means he didn't move very fast at all, maybe only up to five miles an hour. Very, very slow. And his brain was only the size of a dog, a pet dog that you or I might have at home. That's how big the size of his brain was. So it's quite a small brain he's got really there. And the last one I want to show you is an Apatosaurus. Can you say Apatosaurus for me? Apatosaurus, well done. And the other name for him is Brontosaurus. So he's got two names, Brontosaurus as well. And he's got a really tall neck, if you can see that. So he can reach really, really high up to those trees and eat those leaves and plants as he goes. And he's also got a really really sharp tail that would whip the other predators out of the way. Now he was the tallest dinosaur and you'll see in a minute what happens when he's in our story. He could be as tall as your house. In fact even taller. Four houses on top of each other is how tall a Potosaurus could be. That's incredible. Now, don't forget, these dinosaurs lived a very, very long time ago, before humans were even alive, before we were even here. So now these dinosaurs are extinct, which means we can't actually meet them face to face, but we can go on an adventure for sure. And the story that I want to read to you today is actually about a Brontosaurus, but it's called Bronterina. It's a bit of a funny name, isn't it? Brontorina, it's because this Brontosaurus here wanted to become a ballerina. So it's called Brontorina. So I hope you enjoy my story today. Brontorina. Brontorina had a dream. I want to dance. But you are a dinosaur, Madame Lucille pointed out. True, Brontorina replied, but in my heart, I'm a ballerina. She's too big and she doesn't have the right shoes. Madame Lucille wondered what to do. She'd never had a dinosaur as a student before. Dinosaurs were rather large and this one certainly did not have the right shoes. But then she felt Clara and Jack tugging at her skirt. Oh, they pleaded. Madame Lucille looked into the dinosaur's eyes. 
What is your name, my dear? Brontorina. Brontorina of Patasaurus. I even sound like a dancer, don't you agree? Madame Lucille did agree. How could she not? Welcome to Madame Lucille's Dance Academy for girls and boys, she said. Please, try not to squash the other dancers. Music, Magnolia, she commanded the piano player. As Magnolia began to play, Madame Lucille turned her commands to her students. Plie, releve, arabesque, and jete. What a graceful dancer you are, my dear, Madame Lucille explained. Brontorina blushed. On the outside, I am a dinosaur, but in my heart, you're a ballerina, cried Clara and Jack. But she still doesn't have the right shoes. In the weeks that followed, look out! Help! Hey, watch your tail! The piano! Oh, Brontorina, cried Madame Lucille. I'm afraid you are too big to be a ballerina. You barely fit in my studio. And how in the world will a male dancer ever lift you over his head? I could do it, Jack shouted. No, my dear, you could not, sighed Madame Lucille. I told you she was too big. A tear fell from Brontorina's eye downcast. She turned to leave. Wait, Clara called out. Don't go. My mother has been working on a surprise for you all week, Brontorina, and she's bringing it today. Whatever are you talking about? Madame Lucille asked Clara. Just then, Clara's mother appeared at the door. You must be Brontorina, she said, holding out the surprise. I hope these will fit. <gasps> well, now she has the right shoes. Brontorina beamed. They fit perfectly, she cried. I am a ballerina. Or I would be, if only I weren't so big. Oh, fiddlesticks, said Madame Lucille. Why didn't I see it before? The problem is not that you are too big. The problem is that my studio is too small. And so the whole class went off to look for a studio big enough to hold all of Brontorina's talent. Too small, too small, still too small, still too small. I have an idea. Mm. Now Madame Lucille's Dance Academy had room for everyone. Madame Lucille's Outdoor Dance Academy for girls and boys and dinosaurs and cows. I want to dance. Then you must, my dear. And it all began with a dream. Can you hear that music? It's nearly time for us to go on our drama adventure, but will you help me first decide what I need to pack? So maybe you can give me a thumbs up if it's something that you think I'll need or a thumbs down if you think I don't need to take this thing on our drama adventure because we're going to go and meet some dinosaurs very, very soon. So do you think I'm going to need a snowball? No, I don't think so. Do you think I'm going to need a, a water squirter? No, I don't think so either. How about some binoculars? Yes, 
So if you have binoculars, you can grab those too. Otherwise, you could just do this because I love doing this. This helps me to see better all the time. These are my binoculars I use at home. Will I need a telephone? Maybe I should, just in case I get lost, I'll take that telephone with me. How about, we're going to a party? No, I don't think I'll need one of those. Rubber duck? <laughs> no. How about an umbrella? Maybe, in case it starts to rain, I'll take that with me. Um, a balloon? Will I need a balloon at Dinosaur Land? No, I don't think so. Um, how about a compass? Do you think I should take a compass? Yes, this might help me in case I get lost as well. Tell me where to go. A uh, toothbrush. Should I take it? No. I don't think so either. I don't want to stay there. I don't want to stay overnight, do we? We want to go there and come back and sleep in my own bed. I don't want to take my toothbrush and have to sleep there. How about a watch? Good idea, so I know what time it is to come home. Um, stapler? Will I need a stapler? Don't think so. Ha Zuma? Will I need Zuma? No, he can't come, I'm afraid. Oh, how about this? Camera? Take some photos of the dinosaurs. Yep, I think I'll take that. Okay, I think we're set and we are ready to go. Let me get my hat ready. Now you might want to go and get a few bits that you might want to bring on your dinosaur adventure or you can just bring along your binoculars. That's all you'll need. Are you ready? Okay, let's go into the time machine. We go, spin around for me. by. Let's stop like a dinosaur. How loud can you stop? Stop. I can hear roaring too. This is incredible. Can you show me your biggest roar on the three? One, two, three. Roar! It's my 
must be Bronterina. <gasps> wow, look how tall she is. She's huge. <gasps> is she taller than your house? I think she is. Do you think we can go and stroke her? Let's go up and try and stroke her, ready? Bronterina. Doesn't she? Ow! Oh, she just whipped me with her tail! Did she whip you? Should we try and stroke her again? Run, Tarina, please don't do that again. Shh, let's creep up to her. Let's do big strokes this time. Big strokes. Whoa! She's massive. Look how tall she is. Did she whip you round the face with her tail? Ouch. Oh, one last time. Hope she doesn't whip us this time. Run to me in a bit. <gasps> Ow, that was a hard one. I think she thinks we're trying to eat her. We're not, don't worry. <sighs> Guys, I don't know where we are. No, I think we're lost. What did I bring with me again to help me find my way? A compass. Can you get your compasses out too? Show me your compass. Oh, which way's north? That way. Oh no, it's that way. How do we get back? I think we should go this way. Let's try that way. No, it's not that way. Should we try that way? It's not this way either. I don't know where we are. Oh, oh, great. Now it's started to rain. Can you get your umbrellas out? Oh. oh, God, it's really chucking it down now. We just have to stand here till it all goes. Oh, my feet are getting all muddy. I didn't bring my wellies. Did you bring your wellies? Oh. I'm actually a bit hungry. Are you? Should we have our sandwiches? What sandwich did you bring today? Oh, hmm, let me see what I've got. Mmm, I've got tuna mayonnaise. What have you got? You want some of my sandwich? Do you like tuna? Or you don't like tuna? Mm. I like tuna. What's in yours? Can I have some of yours? You're not sharing? Come on, give me a bit of your sandwich. Mm. Yummy. Oh, it stopped raining. Put your umbrellas away. Let's go. <gasps> Whoa, the Apatosaurus is still there. Should we take a photo? Get your cameras out. Look up. Well done. Should we do it again? Cameras at the ready. Let's say one, two, three, and take the photo. Are you ready? One, two, three. <gasps> Show me your photo. Excellent, look at mine. Oh, we re I met a real Petasaurus today. Fantastic, guys. I think it's time to go home. But before we do, I've just found something for you. Wow, it's a real dinosaur rock. I could take this home too. And I found one for you as well. Wow, these are incredible. I just found them by my feet. Shall we take them with us? Guys, it's time to go. Let's get back into our time machine and spin. Here we go. And land with a bump. Woo! Oh, we made it. That was excellent. I think we just about got away from that T-Rex. He wanted to eat us, didn't he, for his snack. Oh, excellent. Guys, do you remember what Bronterina wanted to do in that story? What did she want to do? She wanted to learn how to dance. Do you remember what type of dance she wanted to learn? Can you shout it out at me? What type of dance was it? It was ballet. She wanted to learn ballet. Amazing. So we've got two types of dinosaur dances that we're going to do with you today. One of them is we're going to pretend that we're at Madame Lucille's Dance Academy. We're going to be ballerinas. And the other one is a dinosaur rock dance. 
So if you like ballet and you've got any ballet shoes that you'd like to put on or any tutus, I'm going to put mine on now too. Or if you've got any rock bits that you could maybe have a, a guitar or a pretend guitar, or you could just mime it with me, that's fine. Or if you've got any rock glasses that you'd like to join in for our two dances that we're gonna to do together now. So pop me on hold and come back ready for our dances. Go and grab your bits, off you go. Okay, so I'm almost ready. I've got my tutu on and I've just found my ballet shoes. So I'm just going to slip those on too. I'm just going to take you through some of the ballet moves that they might have done at Madame Lucille's Dance Academy with Brontarina. So the first one is releve, which means we stretch up really high to the ceiling. Do you remember what happened when Brontarina stretched really high up? She broke through the ceiling, didn't she? So I hope you're not as tall as Brontarina. And then we're going to do a, tour, a turn and a spin. Then we're going to do points, point our toes. We're going to point our toes as much as we can, forward, forward, and then we're going to bend. This is called plie. Madame Lucille said plie in the story. She also said jete, which means jumping, big jumps from side to side. So we're going to jete this side, jete this side. How big can you do your jumps? Jete over here and jete over here fantastic so are you ready on a play our music get ready ballerinas standing up tall we're going to renovate up to the sky stretch as high as you can and turn lovely can you turn the other way too excellent hands down let's do some pointing point forward and we're going to play our dinosaur rock song we're going to be playing our guitars if you've got a real one or an imaginary one that's excellent we're going to be flying like dinosaurs we are going to be turning and hopping can you do a turn and a hop we're going to be doing turns and hops we're going to be roaring like dinosaurs and then we're going to stop we're going to freeze like musical stuff and then we're going to do it all again. There might be some stomping involved and some growling too. Okay, are you ready? Here it goes. Let's go. 
How would you design him? So we've got stripes and spots. You could have swirls. What colours would you choose? So get designing your imaginary dinosaurs. And just a couple of book recommendations as well. Harry and the Bucket Full of Dinosaurs is one that we absolutely love. And there's so many different versions. This one is where they go to school. And this one also is how to grow a dinosaur. And it's fabulous and really, really great for the imagination. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, hope to see you soon.